If you care about fluid or responsive typography, you probably don't want to miss this video because we may change the way you work with typography forever. First, I'll quickly show you what's wrong with most of fluid typography systems. Then I will show you how we can fix this with the new utility classes and typography CSS properties I introduced with the Oxyprops version I published today. And if you are not yet an Oxyprops user, or if you want to understand what's going on, I will show you how to achieve the same result with settings in your page builder and vanilla CSS. So first, let's have a look at a typical fluid typography system. You are probably familiar with system using the clamp CSS function with min and max limits and a relative unit between the two adapting to your screen size. So let's start by inserting a section. So this is a, a simple responsive grid. It goes to two columns on mobile landscape and one on mobile portrait breakpoints. Okay, and in this grid, let's add simple cards. We are not trying to achieve a perfect design today. And I will duplicate it three times. So we get three cards. If we look at the headings, we don't have specific settings. So they are currently using the framework typography system, matching the font size for a level three heading. So to understand the problem we are trying to solve, let's have a look at what happens when we reduce the viewport width. So let's go first to the tablet breakpoint. This is still a three columns grid, but my screen is narrower and then the font size has slightly reduced. Let's go to the next breakpoint. We are down to two columns. The viewport width has reduced, so my font size still has reduced. And let's go down to the last breakpoint, mobile. My viewport with reduced once again, and so my font size is did reduce accordingly. But you may notice that the problem is that on the smallest breakpoint, my card component actually has a bigger width than it had on the previous breakpoint on this one. But even if my card itself is bigger because of the way most fluid typography system work, my text has a smaller font size on the mobile portrait breakpoint that it has on the mobile landscape. And what I would like to achieve is a typography system that scales not or not only with the viewport width, but that scales with the container width, with my card width. And I want my heading size to match my card dimensions and not my viewport dimensions, because this is what matters and what will help us is new CSS feature called container queries. So how can we use container queries in our page builder? So let's get back to my desktop, my base breakpoint, and I will work on the card in the middle so we can compare with the other one. And to make things clear, let's assign to this one a font size of fluid three, and let's assign to our text a font size of fluid one. As I didn't create a specific custom class, I can either change the values or simply duplicate my card. It's now in the middle. And then I will pick my reference card and place it in the middle. Let's make sure all our cards have the same height, the class or dash stretch. And now we are ready to work on this one. So the first thing we want to do is to create on this card what is called a new containing context. And to do so, I will select my article, which is the card container, and I will give it one of the new classes. And if you start typing container, we are suggested with three classes, and I will pick the container inline size. What are those three classes doing? Well, the normal one sets the behavior to normal, which is the standard behavior. The inline size will create a containing context that will look for the inline dimensions, that's in my case for a left to right or a right to left language, the horizontal axis. So it will look for my card width. And the third one, the container size, will look both for the inline and the block axis. So, so both width and height. In my case, what I need is the inline size. And I've done nothing, but let's just save and inspect our front end to look what's different now for this card. So here is our front end. Let's expand our tree. 
So we have our three articles. And what you can see on the central one is that it's identified by my browser dev tools as a container, which is not the case of the other ones. And if I click on the container, I get the information and you see that it's highlighted with this dotted line. Okay, so this class we just added did create a new containing context and made this card a container for our browser. So back in the editor, we can now use the characteristics of this container. So let's select my heading and I will give it a font size. But this one, I will use this line container fluid. These are new sizes associated with new CSS properties I introduced in version 1.11 that was just released today. And as this is a heading level three, I will use my container fluid size three. And for my text, I will use my container fluid size one. Okay, now our cards look similar. And probably if we go and look in the details, the font size is not exactly the same, maybe a few tenths of a pixel close. But what's interesting is now what will happen at the various breakpoints. So let's check tablet version. And we can notice that this one already reduced in size more than the two other ones because those one with the typical fluid typography system did reduce relative to the screen viewport width. And between those two breakpoints, the relative reduction was not much, but this one that react to the container width this reduce a bit more. Now let's go to the next breakpoint. And here interesting things happen because my card width is actually bigger at this breakpoint than it was on the previous breakpoint because my screen viewport width has reduced. But as I now have only two columns instead of three, the width of each individual column is bigger at this smaller breakpoint than it was at the previous breakpoint. And the result is that on my container card, my heading font size and my text font size actually increased to accommodate the container width that did increase when on the other cards, even if the card is actually bigger, the font size did reduce because they follow the viewport width. And this will be even more visible if we go to the last breakpoint, the mobile portrait breakpoint. And at the top, we have the standard fluid typography system that scales with the viewport width. And at the bottom, we have the new container fluid typography system that scales with the container width. And our card actual width did again increase from the previous breakpoint. And we have a heading and a text with a size that matches my card's actual width, which in my opinion is much better than the typical one. Before container queries existed, the only way we had to solve problems like this one was by introducing JavaScript that would monitor element changes in the page and then dynamically inject new font size depending on the actual container width. Now with container queries, you see that that very simple, we just defined a container and assigned a font size property to an element inside of this container. And then our browser with CSS does the job for us. Okay, let's come back to our desktop and maybe I will zoom a little to show you how the menu did change. So now we have two sets of fluid typography. The first one, the viewport fluid, it used to be named font size fluid. Now it's the viewport fluid, which is linked to the viewport, the classical one. And we have a second set which is the container fluid and the container sub for the associated subheadings that will work inside a containing context that you create with the container inline size or the container size utility classes. And apart from the fact that one varies with the viewport and the other one varies with the container, they both follow your typography general settings with the base font size, the minimum font size, the font scale ratio, the minimum to maximum ratio. And maybe I will have to change the name of the setting because that's not anymore a mobile to desktop ratio. But now with these new container queries introduced, 
the ratio is the minimum to a maximum ratio. It's not necessarily mobile to desktop. For the viewport fluid system, it will be mobile to desktop. But for the container query, it will be minimum to maximum fluid size. Okay, so now what if you don't have Oxyprobs to help you add quickly the correct class and the correct typography? Or what if you want to understand what's behind those utility classes and CSS props? Well, let's have a look now with pure CSS and settings in our page builder, how we can achieve something similar. So I will get rid of this font size and I will also get rid of my utility class. And now my card will behave exactly as the other ones. So if you remember, the first thing we want to do is to create a containing context at my card level. We don't have any settings in Bricks or in Oxygen to create this, so we will need to use custom CSS. So let's make sure we have our card selected and we will go to CSS and write some custom CSS. So if you are using Oxygen, you can directly write the CSS properties. If you are in Bricks, you need to tell Bricks what is the target selector and to target the current one, you use root. And when processing a custom CSS, Bricks will replace the word root with the proper selector a pair of curly brackets and the property we want to create is a container dash type and we want to set it to inline dash size. And this is not necessary, but if we want to, we can also give a name to our container with the property container dash name and let's set it to card, for example. Okay, so if you are trying this in Oxygen, you forget about the root and the curly brackets, you just have to enter those two lines in your custom CSS. Let's save and check our front end. So if I refresh, my central card should still be identified as a container. And this is the case. If I highlight it, I can see my containing context. Let's go back to the editor. And I said that uh, creating a name is optional. That's because by default, when you refer to a containing context, the algorithm will look for the closest containing context in the structure tree. So the first parent being a container will be used as the context. If you create a complex design with containers inside other containers, the name will help you to refer to the container you want for a specific usage. And when you have created a container, you can create container queries. And once again, I'm showing you, but we don't need it for what we want to achieve. But if you want to create a container query, it's similar to a media query instead that you use an at container rule instead of the typical at media rule. And for example, you can write a container at media, mean with, etc., etc. That's not what we need because the simple fact that we have created a container gives us access to new container units. So I will come back to my typography. Okay, and I should have saved when I deleted my property. So let's save now to make sure it's empty. Let's check also our text. It's okay. So for our font size, we can, for example, say that we want our font size to be 10 CQI, which is the container query in line. So with this unit, my font size will be 10% of my container inline size. The I stands for inline. I could also use a CQW, but as you know, I prefer to use logical property because they match any language direction, which is not the case for using width and height or left, right, top, bottom. So with this 10 CQI, if we have a look at the various breakpoints, well, on the mobile landscape, we can see that our text is bigger than the standard cards and on mobile, it is even more visible. Okay, so using directly CQI like I did is possible. 
Honestly, I was a bit lucky with the result I get by setting it to 10 CQI, but most of the time, you will want to associate this value with either a min or a max or a min max or a clump or a calc function to introduce a bit of container query and not use only a container query unit as I did. For example, we could set a font size to something like a calc function and we want to calculate maybe a base, a base size of 1.5 rem and we add to this base size two or three, let's try three CQI. So this way, the variation would be less extreme. We have a base size and we add a variable portion on it. And I don't know what this we, I don't know what uh, will be the result because I didn't try it before, but that's what we get. Okay, so it's quite close to my standard font size, but now let's have a look at the mobile portrait and it works. And maybe you notice it less, it's less extreme. It did increase, but less that than the previous version. And I think it's actually quite good on this breakpoint. This font size, it's much more visually pleasant than this one that only scales with the viewport width and not with our component, our card, actual width. And that's it for this short introduction to container queries. In this video, we only explored a very, very small fraction of the possibilities offered by these new container queries. And actually, you notice that we didn't even use a container query. We did just create a containing context and used the new unit made available for us within this containing context. So we have six available units, CQI for the inline size, CQB for the block size, CQV, CQW for the width, CQH for the height. And we also have the CQ min and the CQ max that will always give us the minimum of both dimensions and the maximum of both dimensions, depending if our container is a portrait or a landscape format. So go experiment with uh, these new CSS features. Tell me in the comments what you did with it. Don't forget to push the like button Button, to subscribe to the channel, to get your own copy of Oxyprops if you don't have it yet. And I'll see you in the next video.